When I was a kid, I used to think about a landscape, and I would want my body to be a membrane, like it could be floating like a sheet over the whole of the valley of the mountain range, so that I could make love with the whole of the land. Every time I look at a face or a body or hands or even a landscape, I want to bring you into me so you become me and I become you. Basically, I want to empathize with you. And it's that that I live by. I came from left-wing parents of an extreme degree. They were socialist, if not communist, and uh, very involved with civil rights and inequality of working things and unionism. They were pathologically optimistic, hoping for the premise that socialism would somehow save the world. My daddy liked pleasure. <laughs> he liked to get down. Mom was a mink Marxist, and so she really liked to live well. They had a Stutz bear cot, and they went to Florida. She wore mink clothes. Man, they got drunk. They, they were having a good time. My parents, and my mother especially, trained me that the revolution was soon to come. And so, being a revolutionary in a soon-to-come mode, I photographed for the revolution. I was photographing the bourgeoisie, much like Aceh was photographing the back streets of Paris, to document them before they disappeared. I had no commercial ambitions. I was a revolutionary. We were born in that generation to think that we could change the world. Hee hee hee, hee hee, hee hee hee. That was a crazy motherfucker, man. <laughs> That's <laughs> some crazy shit. I don't think that I actually realized that it was absolutely wrong until I was in my 20s, really. You know, I just don't think I did. And now, wait a second, I started Social Graces in 1974-ish. So it had to be then I was still thinking about that. I mean, we were delusional. I would go to the upper crust, and they would say, what are you doing? I'd say, well, I'm, I'm photographing. Say, well, what for? You're clearly not a wedding or an event photographer, even though you're dressed well. Thank you very much. I said, thank you. And so I'd say, well, I'm photographing the archives of gaiety. And they'd say, oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful aspect of things, isn't it, now? I said, yes, of course it is, yes. And sniff around and take seven gin and tonics to start with, boink, 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 and belt them back. <laughs> And I would sneak into the bathroom and smoke six bones, you know, nothing to do with getting high. <laughs> I was just... <laughs> I'd drive the fucking truck back to Martin's Creek over here and develop the film. Boink, boink, boink. <laughs> now that's obsessive. The other part of it, I went to buy a lawnmower from John and Sabatine on the road there and bumped into him and his crazy family and uh, hung around for a long time. The Sabatines are angry and cantankerous, but they're comfortable in their skins. Going down there and I'm like fixing fucking bulldozers and smelling farts and, you know, smoking weed and hanging out with John's house. Hey, you got a, you got a wrench. Yeah, I got a wrench. Hey, Church, they call me, Teeny Sabatine. Church, come on over here and eat this fucking sauce. I says, there's so much grease on the top of that. She says, yeah, yeah, smather it with your face. It's good. Yeah, you know, I mean... <laughs> Who's to complain? I'm a teacher for a long, long time, so I've been trained to articulate on the spot about pictures. So yes, I can objectify the process, if need be, but I'd rather not, thanks. <laughs> you know. I always thought of my art as to serve to educate, to inform, to do something way beyond the idea of art itself. It's about the nature of how chance aligns itself with coincidence on a sensual level. 
when the light screeches across your face, as it does right now, can I see only your face, or do I start to imagine a mountain range? Or the skinny shave of the moon? When your ear bulbously moves out like that with its pink capillaries, do I see it as an ear? Or do I see it as something which alternatively becomes a piece of pork rind? How many different ways can the imagination be penetrated by the nature of coincidence? Every time I look at anybody, anytime, I'm always after the deepest place. And all of my years of doing fashion models and all these types, I was just looking for their deepest place and I just kept on getting disappointed because there was none. He. <laughs> I always thought that fashion was a theater without a plot. It's a world of violence, the violence of obsolescence. When you're no longer needed, you're gone. I'm not looking for their externals, I'm looking for their internals. The closer that I can get, the more I can discover. sensual, primal empathy is stronger in me than any judgment. If you're cynical about a group of people and you think that you know it all, you know nothing at all. All you can do in life is to bring in experience and see if you can learn from it. If you have a presumptuous, you know, point of position, um, there's no reason to photograph. There's no reason to live, actually. It's just no reason to live at all. Everything that you experience has to be open. I'm looking for a moment where I find myself within the other. And that's the central factor. Because it's our deepest humanity that we asked for. And it's our deepest humanity that we have to give. Jeannie Sabatine and Social Graces, some of the Hollywood types, I felt something that I could find myself merge into. Many people are starstruck. And so if you see Warren Beatty or a Meryl Scripp, You've seen their movies, and you think, oh, my God. <gasps> oh! You know how folks are. They, they, they're funny that way. I don't see a lot of films. It wouldn't construct me that these guys were stars. Vanity Fair had me under contract. They were getting me places where I wanted to be, hanging out with fancy folks, looking at pretty people. The first couple of years that I had the gig, and I think I better please Graydon, oh my God, oh, 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 oh. And I try to do, people would say, here comes, mm, here comes that, and here comes that, I go. And then it became very apparent that all his other four or five photographers were doing all that stuff, and I could go do what I want. So I just went free. So it was just a question of being sleek, and at the same time coming home and being funky. Strobe is sort of like a divining rod. It's a kind of an extension of the decisive moment. So it's not about making a picture, it's about when will chance opportune itself for revelation. But it's about the flesh. I don't like light to be the dominant factor. I'm trying to put together a more complicated mosaic of what it actually means to be alive in the moment. I don't think you can learn anything from celebrity. Celebrity, with all their elaborations on human drama, is a substitute 
for people in terms of how they should view the importance of their own lives. It's about the celebration of self. At the same time, it's a celebration of no self at all. That's what I think celebrity does. I was always a dawdler. I'd take my time getting places. I would get distracted. Contrary to that, I'm a, a willful, reasonably obsessive character. In my archive back here, there's 30,000 prints. What the fuck am I doing after I've taken how many millions of pictures? <laughs> I've been a hedonist in my life. No longer so, I think not. I'm too busy with the business of trying to live my life with deeper purpose in a way. Back in the old revolutionary days, we would hope that there would be a new world out there. The only revolution that we have is within, and that's the imagination, which we have to hold dear. And then the intuition, which we hold even dearer, so. I'm hoping that if I can try to figure out what to do as an artist, how to make it real, I'm hoping that my wife is happy. I'm hoping that my daughter is fulfilled. I'm hoping for simpler things than I used to. Thank you. <laughs> That's a trap. <laughs> Thanks. They're really good. If I was just out here, you know, Rudy Tooty Tooty, out here on my infinity, you know, skinnies, and my Guggenheims and my shows and my books and my do's and doom we do dee dee strike up the band did up the deep dee 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 strike up the band we think oh whoa 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 wouldn't you strike up the band we'll go I've been successful brother but my mother told me that's not good enough ooh the harmonica just kicked out that's my mother. <laughs> Well, I'm on board. That's me. Yeah.